welcome to Solid State Logic. My name is George Horton and I'm the Vice President of the Western Region. I'm here in our demo facilities in Los Angeles. Today, we're going to be talking about the System T broadcast platform and we will be going through some of the unique features that make this one of the most powerful systems out there. System T is a 21st century technology platform which is based around a true IP environment. The power of networks is something that we leverage in this system, allowing us to have incredibly flexible routing and huge scalability. There are three essential building blocks. The first is the control surface. We have the S500 series, which can be custom built to any size. The S300, which comes in three sizes, 16, 32 and 48 faders. And we have the headless console called TCR or Tempest Control Rack. It is a pure IP device. There is actually no audio in the control surface. The second element is the Tempest engine. Tempest is the name that we give to our patented optimal core processing, hence the name of the system, System T for Tempest. The third building block is the I.O. This is how we reach all the other elements in your facilities. The backbone of this is Dante, which is an audio over IP technology. This allows us to connect not only to SSL I.O. boxes, but boxes from many other manufacturers and systems. We use Dante because it has discovery, control and security that we need. But also we support AES67 and SIMT2110. We do not have a TDM router. All the network switches, they are our routers. This can combine thousands of I.O. Some of our clients have more than 10,000 I.O. on their networks. So it is hugely scalable. We had mentioned that this console is a Dante-based system. We have access to the Dante API built into the console to do all our routing from this control surface. If you are familiar with Dante, you are familiar with Ordinate Controller and its idea of doing physical device to physical device routing. Now, as an operator, I may not know what box is, where it is, what its name is. It may be some weird engineering name. What we can apply is a logical layer metadata to all our IO infrastructure. So on this channel here, I wish to choose something from this logical grouping. I have things like playback devices. I have my DAW. I have a stage box. I could build routes to and from things even when they're offline. So for example, you have a fly pack. It hasn't been pushed out onto the stage yet. I can still build my show. And then when it gets plugged in, all my routes get built for me. All of this routing is saved in our show file system. So I build a project, I build a show, I save that project. It saved all the routing on my IP network. So it is, it is a true broadcast style router. Here we are sitting at System T S500. We have fader tiles, we have touchscreens. On the S500, we have a penthouse meter bridge. Let's focus in on the touchscreen. If I want to focus on one element of a channel, I will double tap on the screen to bring up a detail view. So for example, this, this wireless microphone here, I want to have a look at the equalization. So I double tap and it brings up what we call the detail view. If I wish to adjust an element, a band within the equalizer, I can pinch and adjust the cue of that equalizer as I wish. While I am in this detail view, it has also mapped to these touch sensitive controls along the top of the fader tile. I can adjust elements using this. I can use this. I can go from the dynamic section in the center section and I can take control from these controls as well. So if you prefer to use touchscreens, you can use touchscreens. If you wish to use a knob, these exist, or a more traditional channel control tile in the center of the console. In the center of this console, we have a channel control tile. This is everything that exists in a channel path or a bus path. So if I wanted to see the equalizer for a channel, I would see the equalizer. I do have elements of control from this touchscreen. I can control it from more traditional style knobs if I wish. Below that, we have the master tile. The master tile has a variety of functions. It has four independent controls for studio loudspeakers, for green rooms. Within the master control tile, we have a focus fader. So that can track whatever I select. It can also be locked 
to any one particular channel. So if you have your main anchor or your host and you always need that fader, you could lock it to this position here if you wish. There is a section for automation and this is snapshot automation. And on the right hand side, we have my program fader, but actually I could map that to anything. Fader tiles are 16 faders to a tile. The Tempest engine has up to 800 paths. So obviously we're not gonna have 800 faders. We're gonna have some form of layers or banks controlled from these buttons. Bank one, bank two, bank three, bank four. If I wanna to change to a different layer, I use this control here. I can choose different layouts. This fader tile has its own 15 layers and banks. So that can be channels, it can be stems, it can be auxes, mix minuses, track buses. I can use this as a workstation controller if necessary. So on the fader tile, we have the layers and banks. We have the fader. And in the S500, this also has metering. There is indication from the dynamic section, so that will tell me about gate and compression. And finally, there is a tally if I have remote control driving that fader. PFL, AFL, and a select key. The touchscreen and the faders are obviously a linear strip, a path as we call it. And a path could be an input or an output bus. So for example, over here I have an audience, a pair of microphones, and it's a stereo channel. So I have stereo metering. My fader is a stereo fader. I do get an indication in this OLED display telling me that it's stereo, as well as the metering. On the S500, there is one unique feature built in, and that is a KVM. We all have too many screens in our control rooms. So using the KVM, I can pull into the console other applications. So if I need to adjust my workstation or set up my servers or any of those elements, I can bring it directly in front of me. I'm sitting in my sweet spot. I have all these elements in front of me. So let's see how we auto mix because it is a critical tool in our arsenal. Rather than having to run all the faders up and down as people speak and try and track the show, I can just switch the auto mix in. In the center of this display, there is the auto mixer. It is native to the channel strip. You don't need to route it in. You don't need to route it out. So therefore, for example, in this case, when the talent speaks, the audience mics are pushed down by a certain predetermined depth. When the talent stop talking, the audience microphones, which are auto mixing, are then coming back up again to their nominal levels. So let's see that. The auto mix this is really on. One of those just fun topics, but I, I had to ask, especially with Rory, because Rory, this is a big issue for you, and I know. Mm -hmm. This sounds serious, you guys, but isn't. Off again? The trailer for the all-female version of Ghostbusters pop up online last week, and people were losing their minds. Yeah, yeah, no, I think just people take it a little too serious. I mean, right. really. Need Off again? Bust up ghosts. Do you want right. to be able to sign this all bus drop? <laughs> <laughs> We can take our hands off the control surface, but still run a very sophisticated, clean mix. It's a very powerful tool, and it exists natively in each path. A key piece of technology in broadcast is wireless microphones. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could control and monitor those systems natively from the console? We have added to the system the ability to interface directly to various Shure microphones, particularly ULXD and Axiant range of microphones. So I wanted to quickly show how that works and what features and benefits that brings to us. I have a channel here which I have labeled as Shure because that's what we're using here. And I am going to go to the input stage. I have the microphone routed to this channel currently, same as we had done on previous routing. I'm going to take my microphone, I am going to switch it on. The microphone is on. I've got signal, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can now see an indication on here, on this input stage, the RF level and the battery strength from that particular device. This also appears at the top of the channel strip. And I can see the orange for the wireless and the green bars for the battery. So now, if you are using a lot of these or even a few of these, you have an indication that they are in good health and you don't have to run off and go and have a look at the receivers to do this. This is actually part of the Dante infrastructure. These are Dante-based microphones and we're using Dante control 
and monitoring to be able to do that. I really think this is a great addition and something that people have been asking for to add to SSL System T and also our live consoles as well. We live in a world where there are production automation systems that will drive the audio engine. Regularly, we will have people saying, I don't need a physical console. I don't have an audio control room. TCR is the answer. It allows a very small physical footprint, but all the power of the biggest system T if required. Tempest Control Rack is the headless console. In hardware terms, it is a 3U box that will exist in a rack, in a machine room, wherever it may be. It has USB, so you can have a pointing device, a mouse, a keyboard plugged into it. It has HDMI output, so you can have a video screen, you can have a touch screen. It does also support one of these fader tiles. These fader tiles are actually USB devices. So I can have one of these furniture mounted, USB into the TCR, and I essentially have built myself touch screen, fader tile. Another application is fly packs. I need to ship to a remote location to a venue, a full audio console system. But I don't want to send a huge mobile truck. I don't need to send, you know, boxes and boxes of consoles and elements like that. I can send a TCR, IO, and if necessary, a fader tile, a touchscreen, and you have your console. So TCR is all the power of the biggest system T. And do remember, exactly the same software, same features as S500 and S300. There is one intriguing piece that comes with the System T, and that's called T Salsa. It's not just the name. T Salsa is offline software, which is identical to the interface on the console. It has exactly the same environment. So I can take this and run it on a PC, and I can build my whole show file. In fact, if I export the IO database from the console, I can do all my routing offline. So I can be away from my studio, my venue, I can build my show, I can load it onto the console, and it will come up with all the routing and all the names and all the setup I've already done. Now, this is where it gets interesting. t -Salsa can also be online software. So running it on a PC as a network device, and System T as a network, as we said, we can log it into the console and it can give us a second position to control the console. Now, this isn't just a mirror of what the operator is seeing. It is an independent view of the interface. So this means you could have a second engineer who is submixing elements of your show. It isn't a light version of control, it is everything. So T Salsa is a very powerful tool. You're allowed to have two instances of it logged into the console and it is free of charge. You just need to provide the PC. I wanted to talk a bit about remote production, the idea that the engineer or the studio is in a completely different location from the event or the production. System T being a network device allows us to separate our control from our audio processing. And so we can locate in one place all of the production processing and in another place all the control. And we can separate them by very large distances. It can be across the country if required. It just needs a dedicated control link between the two to make that happen. So in terms of control, that could be an S500 console, an S300 console, a TCR rack, or even T Salsa. This allows for incredible flexibility and working with multiple teams across multiple locations. It is the future and it works incredibly well. One of the areas we've seen a lot of growth across many markets is immersive audio. System T is ready for the immersive future. We support formats up to 7.1.4. We have true three-dimensional panning. We have direct outputs and many buses that can be used for object elements. So let's have a look and see how we handle some of these things. Any channel or any bus can be up to 7.1.4. So for example, I have a channel over here, which is coming from a router, and it is a 7.1.4 signal. And you can see all the metering up here and up here. I can just have a singular fader to control all of those elements. I can EQ, I can compress, I can insert onto those paths, and then I can pan them into that 7.1.4 or other types of immersive formats. The panning is based upon what is the source and what is the destination. 
So switch into my pan page. And this is my XY panner. Everything is mapped down to these controls down below as well. I can move this in space, uh, left, center, right, etc. This other one is an XZ panner, or it could be a YZ panner. There may be other ways to visualize that. That is where we get to this interesting theta panning. If I put this into a theta panner, it now becomes a rotational panner. So here, here is that mono signal in the center, on the left, on the right, around the back. Here's its height, and I can move it within the space up and down. What about immersive production? I'm doing a sporting event, and I need to capture a space. We have an ambisonic transcoder. So you get a four channel signal from the microphone, which is an encoded uh, capture of the space. We transcode it to 514, 714, but in that process, I can adjust that, transcode it to my channel-based format, so I can capture the stadium sound or the arena sound or the audience and bring it into my produced shows. So the console natively has the tools you need to do immersive production. As you can see, System T is a hugely powerful system and I really haven't been able to convey everything in this one video. So we would love to hear from you. We're happy to answer any questions. We would love to have you come to our facilities for demos and have a chance to feel and hear it for yourself. Talking about hearing, it does sound great as well. So thank you for listening and I hope to hear from you soon.